What's going on, Seven Footers gang? We have so much fun, exciting news for you guys. Gerard and Jenna here, you guys know what it is. If you haven't noticed, we have a little bit of a, a glow, per se, a facelift. <laughs> Jenna, it's the glow up. Look at that. We got that the is glow up. <laughs> just in time for a hot girl fall. <laughs> Wait, I thought it was hot girl summer. Are. I thought it was it hot is, girl summer. But I was trying. Is it okay? Have the kids said that we could make it in fall and winter? Oh, you trying to, try to have hot girl fall too? Okay. I, mean, I yeah, guess you. so. I mean, 365 <laughs> over here, Gerard. Consistency is key. <laughs> Folks, we are a part of the Props Network. I want to shout out uh, <laughs> Kyle and Sam and all the good people out there who, you know, really helped us out um, with getting the show moved over to this platform. We're really excited to do stuff with the Props Network. Uh, talk yes. a little bit of gambling with you guys on our show. Really, really amped about it. Again, shout out to Sam, Kyle, uh, our good friend Dexter Henry and Brian Fonseca, also over here with the In Hard to Tell podcast, NBA Exchange, uh, Backpack Broadcasting on the Props Network. Uh, so we're psyched for that. And super producer Gregory Alcala, who is going to really be helping us out. By the way, you guys see our fancy background. Greg, show them that background, man. Look how, look how nice it is. I mean, we are the Seven Footers podcast. So you see we got some Seven Footers back there. The legend, Ralph Sampson. We see we got Arvidas Sabonis, Akeem Olajuwon, Shaquille O'Neal, and of course, the legendary Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Your favorite. And <laughs> this is this is so exciting because now we could do all those cool things that we can never do, like roll the tapes, Greg, <laughs> or show, show the image, Greg. Like we can do cool things now, <laughs> okay? Remember those days when we would pretend that we could do cool things like that? It's happening, guys. Yeah, man, It only we took a second. It. It, Actually, like, a lot listen, of those. It, I mean, this is episode like 127, 128. It took us a while to get here, right? But we're happy. This is an awesome, <laughs> awesome uh, platform. We're really looking forward to working with everybody. But Jenna, let's get into it, man, because the association, woo! <sighs> let's chop it up, Gerard. And let's start off on a good winning note here with the Chicago Bulls. The question is, are they the real deal after a victory against the Lakers the other night? DeMar DeRozan in his debut season with the Bulls drops 30... 38, a career high 38. And I mean, he was on fire. This is after he was talking about how people had said that he was washed with the recent trades and everything that's been going on with him, 32 years old in his 13th season. I mean, what do you make of that performance alone, Gerard, before we get into the Bulls to start? Uh, look, DeMar was outstanding and look he's always been an outstanding player see this is why we got greg here look at that man you're seeing you're seeing the great crowd the great video look at that look at that little move the turnaround the fade right in anthony davis's grill money look man derozan had a hell of a game um we all know him as a mid-range master but he has expanded his game he was two or five if i'm not mistaken last night from three like he's he's shooting the three ball look if you a hooper if you're a ball player and you have skill you can add things to your game, and that's what he's done. And I, I, listen, we're going to talk about the Bulls, Jenna, because, look, remember what I said in our season preview? I was like, oh, you got this guy and this guy. So what, you're going to be a playing team? I mean, they, so far they've proven me a little wrong. <laughs> They have proven everybody wrong. They've proven me wrong. Let me tell you, 10-4 and four record to start the season. Again, we always say it's early, but it's never too early to talk about this run that they're on. And let me just say that Monday night's win against the Lakers, the LeBron James-less Lakers, just to add that in there for you guys out there in L.A., <laughs> that win against the Lakers was their first against LA since 2016. Let that marinate in your mentals, as Gerard would say. That yeah, says well, a lot about this Bulls team and how far they've come. Yeah, because, I mean, they've been a dumpster fire forever, <laughs> I mean, right? But listen. We'll get there. And, and remember what I said about Zach Levine this summer, being around KD, Draymond, and all those guys on the Olympic team. Everyone mm -hmm. who goes to the Olympics for the first time, those young guys, when they come back, they're like, oh, no, this is what it is. It's like that idea of, and everyone knows this, right? That idea of, oh, I know how to work hard, right? It's like, nah, when you're around KD and you're around Draymond and these other guys, it's like, oh, wait, that's championship level work ethic. I get it now. What I was doing mm -hmm. was working, 
but it wasn't that kind of working. And you can see it, man. He put it into his game. I'm loving the highlights we're seeing from him right now. And he's becoming more well-rounded, Jenna. It's not just scoring, right? He's he's competing on defense. He's playmaking a little bit. Like he's mm-hmm. he's turning into a well. And we got to give some props to Billy Donovan, head coach. Like they've changed things. We talked about the bad culture in in in, in Chicago in the past with the gar with the gar packs uh, um, administration. Now that they're gone, I- I'm loving what I'm seeing out of out of Chicago. Me and you both. I mean, speaking of Levine, he added 26 points on Monday night along with Lonzo Ball. Let's talk about Lonzo Ball for a second because he's had – he's come out of this purgatory state that he was in of sorts. I mean, when you were with the Pelicans, that'll do that to you, but we'll get there again. <laughs> but <laughs> – whoa, that rolled right off the tongue there. But <laughs> let me talk about Lonzo Ball for a second because we got to talk about his shooting this season especially. He knocked down seven three-pointers the other night against the Lakers in a 27-point performance. Talk to me about his improved shooting because we have seen such a resurgence from him. So I bet the Pelicans could use a player like Lonzo Ball right now, huh? They could use a lot (laughs) more than that. (laughs) Funny funny how that worked, don't it? Look, Lonzo, and he is the perfect player to play on this team, Jenna, because he is what we call a ball mover. When you give him the ball, it doesn't stick. He's not dribbling it 9,000 times, burning out the shot clock and like forcing somebody. No, he is a quick pass, pass ahead kind of guy, quickly moving the ball. You know, coaches always say the ball finds energy. Well, Lonzo gives it a supercharged boost of energy when he moves it, right? It doesn't stick in his hands. He's always looking to get the advantage. That's your goal in basketball. You're trying to create an advantage for your side against the bad guys. And Lonzo's hit ahead passing and his and the way he moves the basketball is key to that. His shooting, I mean, remember when he first came in the league, we're like, oh, we don't know if that shot's going to hold up. We're not sure. Listen, man, if he's able to shoot it at that clip, at a 40% clip, hell, at a 38% clip for the whole season, listen, and if everybody on the Bulls playing how they're playing, Jenna, this is going to be not a play a playing team. It's going to be a playoff team, and they're doing this without Vooch. Vooch is in health and safety protocols. <laughs> Very true. Huge piece missing for the Bulls, and they're still winning and against teams that are slated to go to deep postseason runs. So again, with your point that you just made with them possibly being a playoff team, because again, it is early. Can do they have the tools and the guys right now to make a substantial playoff run? I mean, Jenna, like let me just pull up some numbers for you right now about the Chicago Bulls. So according to Dunks and Threes, as you know, my favorite stat to use when I'm breaking down teams' ability. They are number five in adjusted net rating, number 13 in adjusted offensive rating, and number five in adjusted defensive rating. They have the 18th uh, strongest strength of schedule, right? So about middle of the road. Yo, hmm. So they're beating pretty good teams, right? And they are holding their own against pretty good teams, and they're blowing out bad teams. Yo, this team can guard their asses off. And Caruso is a big part of that. Lonzo, of course. Levine's getting better on that end, as I said. Listen, if now Vucevic is weak on defense, but again, he, he's been out with health and safety protocols. If they can just kind of, everyone's figuring this out. They got their roles together. Jenna, this, yeah, playoffs, not playing, playoffs. And, and and if they're a six seed and you're the three, look, man, I'm not saying you're not going to, I'm not going to say, I'm not saying you're going to beat them. You're not going to beat them, but you may not want to play them. They may be a five seed. What if it's Miami three, six versus the Chicago Bulls? Look, we know how, my, how good Miami is. That may be a rough and tumble seven gamer. It, it's it's something. I I am in, I'm presently impressed. You know what I always say, Jenna? Twenty games at the twenty game mark. That's a quarter of the way through the season. We'll see where the Bulls are. But if they are on this pace, twenty games in, shit. <laughs> 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 oh, I love it. I love to see it. I love to see these teams come in and just bring a new group of guys in, and especially when they're the underdogs, and then they do something like this. They prove that they can turn around the culture in a short time. I mean, it's very, very impressive, especially with that culture shift. So excited to see what we can, um, what they have in store for us the rest of the season. No Let's talk about. A little bit of foreshadowing here. Mm. MVP race is on. It's inevitable. We have some front runners, and we are Mm. going to break down your our top five MVP Mm. picks so far that are leading the board. Okay, Gerard, how you want to do this? Let's mix it up here. We'll we'll go back and forth. We'll start at the bottom with number five. Okay, who was your number five, Jenna? Okay, my number five is 
my my dark horse of sorts, Paul George. Ooh. I feel like, uh huh, yeah, yeah, because <laughs> because we we judge MVP on so many different things. Of course, we always like to say it's a popularity contest. However, mm -hmm. I strategically threw Paul George in my lineup because. As the season trickles down, we have short-term memory. We only remember what we're seeing at the very moment. So I'm counting on Paul George going on a major MVP campaign from in the latter half of the season and then Kawhi coming back to aid that campaign as well. Mm. So, And Paul George is also on my list because he was in the talks last season. He's been in recent conversations. So this is time for Paul George. It is his time. He just got engaged or married, whatever the heck it is. He's loving <laughs> his life. His braids look great. It is time. It is time. And, and it, since it. it is a popularity contest, <laughs> if he has those braids, Tight and right edges laid. We're gonna be, we're gonna be good to go in all areas. I'm dead. All I'm areas. Dead. I Me love and you it. Both. Shout out, shout out to shoe producer Greg. Look at that, man. We got video up here. Paul's doing it. I like that picture. Number five for me. I got we just talked about him, DeMar DeRozan. Man, look, the Bulls are 10 and 4. Number five in adjusting that rating. As I told you, DeMar's doing it, man. Like he listen, we saw what he just did last night against the Lakers. He's scoring. He's doing what he can on defense. Look, man, I'm just – if the Bulls continue on this way, he is a big reason. Of course, Lonzo, Alex Caruso, Zach, we talked about all that. But DeMar, I got DeMar in, in my number five spot. Dang, DeMar. Man, <laughs> he almost made my list. But I was like, you know what, my boy Paul George, I have such a good argument for him. So Well, I, I'm going to go four since you went – right? So we'll go – we'll go, it's like every time you go, you'll go, you go double when it's your turn. So my four – is your man you just said, Paul George. I'm with you. Here's what Paul George is good at. Paul George is good at being the number one on a team. Like, he's very good at that. I mm -hmm. think it's a little bit of a challenge for him to figure out how to do the two thing, not because of any kind of, like, he's selfish or whatever. It's just figuring out, okay, if Kawhi is doing X, what works for me? Should I should I move off cuts from off, off screens? Should I cut to the rim more? Like, I think he has a little bit of trouble when he's playing next again, next to another dominant superstar. But mm -hmm. listen, we saw what he did for the Clippers last year in the playoffs. I mean, right? I mean, that was Paul George. He was, was. He was money, right? Uh, so, yeah, I'm with you. Paul George is my number four. So I got DeRozan at five, George at four. Uh, who is your number four? <laughs> Playoff P. Um, <laughs> my number four is – this is kind of another dark horse pick. Okay. Probably not going to happen depending, you know, it's such a tight race, his age, you know, you never know. Donovan Mitchell. Okay. I think okay. he's okay. he's my young pick for MVP. I think he's on track. And I think that within that class of guys that we talk about, that we associate him with, Booker, Jamal Murray, mm -hmm. all of them, mm -hmm. I really do think he has a leg up on everybody with the way he's playing, with the roster that he's surrounded with, and the coaching down in Utah. I mean, there's no reason Donovan Mitchell shouldn't show up this season unless he gets in his own way. That's literally my true opinion. He has all the right tools, especially with Dwayne Wade in his ear, even closer than ever. I spoke mm -hmm. with him before the season started, oh. and he had a very, very good mentality. He reflected on last season and said that he learned a lot, and he said that he actually wished that um, – he wished that it didn't go any other way because he he was able to learn so many things about mm -hmm. himself in mm -hmm. the adversity that he went through with the injury in the postseason, getting bounced out early on, and that mm -hmm. whole narrative that Utah has. So, yeah, Donovan Mitchell, I'm predicting huge things for him. I'll be very, very disappointed if he does not ball out on another level this this season. All right, give your number three as well. Oh, oh. My goodness, wasn't ready. <laughs> um, my number three is going to be, oh, you know, I hate to say it, but it's going to be Luca. I mean, <laughs> he's incredible. There's no reason. Mm. I mean, aside from mm. recent injury, hopefully that he's all right. Last night, yeah. I think yep. I saw there was no damage. Mm -hmm. No uh, damage. You can miss a couple games, but, you know, yeah, he played well. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, I mean, he's been playing well. There's no reason for any of us to doubt him. I mean, there's not even an argument, a strong argument that I need to put up here, like once you say the kid's <laughs> name, because literally, like, look at the box score. I mean, and I know we don't base things solely on that, but I mean, his talent is just on another level. I'd, I've never seen anything like it, to be honest. Um, I got Except you. for certain people um, named LeBron James, but that's another <laughs> conversation. Listen, he best show. not be, he best not be in your, in, on your list is what I'm saying. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go with my number three and my number two because I, I did five and four. So just to recap, at five, I have DeMar DeRozan. At four, I had um, uh, Paul George. Number three. And it's, this, see, this is tough. With my, my top three, it's just – it's really hard because you're literally splitting hairs right mm-hmm. now. My mm-hmm. number three is Nikola Jokic. I mean, look, the Denver Nuggets, the reigning MVP is killing it right now. He's doing, he's averaging 26, 18, and six, which, pfft, <laughs> like, listen to what I just said 26, 13, and six. He's ridiculous. Like, he's, he's out of control. His effective field goal percentage is 64%, true shooting 67, something of that nature. Um, I was telling producer Greg before the show win shares per 48, which is, um, the estimated number of wins a player calculates per 48 minutes. 48 minutes, of course, is the length of a regulation basketball game. League average, Jenna, is 0.100. Nikola Jokic is 0.353. He is three and a half times better than league average. Like he, and he's doing this without uh, Michael Porter Jr., uh, the, the bad back, which is unfortunate. I'm really worried about him. And he's doing it without Jamal Murray, who's recovering from uh, the torn ACL. I mean, mm-hmm. he he's on another level right now, Jenna. Like, right now, estimated plus minus and dunks in three. He's number one in the league at plus 11.6. That means when you calculate the strength of his teammates and the opponents, he, every time he's on the floor, makes his team t- almost 12 points better. That's ridiculous. Next closest person is eight points better, and that's Steph Curry. Like, that is wild. Like, he, listen, he won the MVP last year. He may be better this year. So it's Nikola Jokic. Uh, my number two, and again, tough, man, tough, 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 tough. But, you know, I'm going to that city by the bay. Stephen Curry, listen, the Warriors are 11-2, and two, best record in the whole entire association. Now, they had the easiest schedule all season so far. It starts ratcheting itself up it, on this road trip. They played the Charlotte Hornets on Sunday night, lost a tough one. They're going. They're in Brooklyn tonight. I'll be at that game momentarily to play the Nets. Um, you know that's that's gonna be a, that's gonna be a good one. And but Steph Steph is doing it all right now. As I mentioned, he's number two in estimated plus minus at 0.82 points uh, per 100 possessions that he makes his team better. He's top five in win shares per 48. Leads the league in three pointers made and three pointers attempted. And he's not even shooting it that well yet. And he's leading and he's second in the league in scoring. I mean, when he hits that hot streak, which you know is inevitable. Sheesh. And when they get clay back, good God, look out. All right, Jenna, who is your number one MVP pick? Did I or two? You, you, all of them? You, you, have, or you have two and one. You did oh, yeah, Paul George. Okay, okay. You had Paul George. You had um, uh, Luka. Luka Doncic. Donovan. And Don, Don, Donovan Luka. Okay, so you got two and one. Give me your two and one. Yeah. Um... I'm going to kick myself for not including Giannis on this, but I'm just going to not include him because damn it, share, just share. Well, and the, and the bucks so, are below 500. So exactly, exactly. But I just wanted to clarify that before people get up on my mentions. Cause they love to bully <laughs> you girl. Um, <laughs> my two are Stephen Curry mm. as number two. And then number one, Kevin Durant, of I course. Mean, I mean, I it's mean. inevitable. You, know? <laughs> you already explained all the damn reasons. So I'll just say that going off of your point that Steph Curry um, has the most three pointers made all time, or he passed, he just passed mm-hmm. Ray Allen. Mm-hmm. And that's including, he passed Ray Allen, including the playoffs. And this is already, it's, only not only but like it's in the prime of his career you Mm -hmm. know how many good years of shooting he has left like i don't think we're ready for the the accomplishments he's still has to um you know reach so just putting that into perspective there and he's also thinking of other aspects that he's had to go through recently um with you know 
taking over for in the place of Clay Thompson, which was a huge loss. And Clay's been gone. Let's be serious. Look at the league mm-hmm. last time Clay played. Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> Chris Paul was on the Rockets. Like, let's just put that into perspective. Mm-hmm. So Stephen Curry's had to do a lot in terms of keeping this team afloat and together and keep the chemistry alive as they've gone through so much adversity. And when I say adversity, meaning like they were mm-hmm. last year's dumpster fire. So mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. it. And Kevin Durant, I mean, come on, we don't even need to play that game already. You know? like, <laughs> just, just go take a look at it. <laughs> I ain't even messing with you on this one. Well, of course, you know who my number one is. The seven-foot easy money sniper in Brooklyn. Leads the league in scoring, 29.6 points per game. Eight rebounds, five assists. Uh, his shooting splits, Jenna, 58-42-84. Absurd. 63% effective field goal percentage. 68% true shooting. He's shooting 68% on two point shots. And we know he's a master of the mid range. So this ain't all dunks and layups. Nobody has ever shot that high and uh, in terms of uh, scoring from two point range with that many points per game since Shaquille O'Neal. And what's the difference between Shaq and Kevin Durant? Shaq scores all his buckets around the basket. Durant shoots threes and mid range. I mean, he is at the stage of his career, Jenna, where Coming off the Achilles tendon, I mean, he clearly is not the same athlete he once was. But, I mean, height and shooting, <laughs> apparently that doesn't change, <laughs> right? Like, it doesn't matter <laughs> if, you have, if you have a repaired Achilles or not. Like, if you're tall and you can shoot, I mean, he just, he is literally, as people say, a cheat code. And I say this all the time, Jenna. When he misses a shot, it ain't about the defense that was played. He just misses, right? Like, because he can get to his spot on the floor and rise up over just about anybody and connect. And 71% from mid-range. I mean, it's just, he's he's insane. Now, I do have a worry about him, though, Jenna, and I know I've, I've, sh- I've shared this with you. With James Harden still working himself back into shape, and he's, get, he's getting better, and with Kyrie AWOL because he's the one taking vaccine, the Nets are leaning heavily on Durant right now. And you mm-hmm. know what I – listen – these 82 games aren't the games that matter. It's the 16 that you got to win come April, May, June. And, you know, this is something to keep an eye on. I mean, he's averaging about 36 minutes a game. Too many minutes for my liking um, right now. So, you know, the Nets are going to have to start figuring some things out. But, I mean, he is – I mean, Jenna, he's sublime right now. Like, nothing on the basketball court looks difficult for him to do at any – he just moves at his own pace. <laughs> right, I'm going to get to my shot right here. I'm just going to pull up and shoot. Cool. We good. I mean – it's ruthless efficiency. He's he's a machine. I mean, I thought that he would go through a little bit of a slump when he got back from the Achilles. <laughs> nah, didn't miss a beat. I guess didn't. we're not gonna guess we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna go no, right in and just it's gonna go yeah, go back to being best player in basketball. Yeah, it's just you know you do what you do, and it's fine. I feel like like players like him, LeBron, you know those select few Steph mm-hmm. Curry. Mm-hmm. It's so cool. It must be so cool to sit there before a game in the locker room every night and be like, yo, I'm really about to go shit on him tonight. Like, I'm about to go. Like, they don't even know what's coming. They don't even know. Jenna, and I know. Like, I wish I had those superpowers. So That's all. It's so funny that it's so funny that you say that because you know me. Like, I am – greatness is something, not just in sports, but just in life, is something that fascinates me. Like, imagine – it doesn't matter what it is whatever your job is, accounting, neurosurgeon, it doesn't matter. Imagine being the best player or the best person in the world at that thing. (sighs) What? man? Like, I I don't even know, like, what that mind space is like, right? Like, I always say, I wish I was one one thousandth as good as anything as he is at at, at basketball, right? Like, I mean, it's just like, it's unbelievable. But, you know, of course, a lot of that is talent and ability, but... (laughs) Uh, I was at an event last night and Bruce Brown from the Nets, they were doing the city jerseys and, you know, um, one of the people asked him, Bruce, you know, what's it like playing with around James Harden, Kevin Durant, all these career, all these awesome elite players. And he was like going through all of them. And he's like, you know, said good things about all of them. He got to Kevin Durant. He goes, the thing about Kevin Durant is, you know, how people, you always hear him say he practices everything at game speed. Bruce is like, that is no joke. Everything he does is at game speed. And, the reason why you get to be as good as Kevin Durant, you have to work, man. That's that's work. 
It, it don't just roll out of bed. I mean, he makes it look like he just rolls out of bed and just drops 30. But the way you're able to do that is by putting in countless hours. Of, I mean, the amount of time, the amount of basketballs he shot in his lifetime were probably somewhere in the who knows crazy millions, right? But that's the that's the repetition. It's rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. That kind of dedication and commitment to your craft. All these guys, Kevin Durant, LeBron James, Steph Curry, James Harden, like these the greats, these great players. That's how you're able to be great is by just consistently doing it over and over and over and over. It's brilliant. I love, I, I love to hear it, Gerard. You know, you know, I'm here for it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, I mean, the man's unbelievable. It's out of control. I mean, you know, what's also unbelievable. A couple teams that completely suck. I just, there's no way around it. <laughs> there's no way around it. So in, in what we like to call a little, um, segment, that's not really a segment, but it is one because we're just crowning our dumpster fires of the week. <laughs> I love it, Craig. This team is a dumpster fire. This is it. <laughs> hot go- hot yes. garbage. <laughs> I keep forgetting about our new cool labels and it's, stuff it's down great. there. <laughs> Check it out right over there. <laughs> um, anyway, let's pretend I didn't just do that. Um, <laughs> Start with your dumpster fire, Gerard. Hit me with the nastiest team of the week. I mean, it's got to be the Pelicans, or right? The, the season. So far. <laughs> I mean, it's got it's to be the Pelicans, right? Like, I, I it just is. like I, it is. Look, I get it. No Zion, all that. But yo, can I ask you a question, Jenna? Do you have Always. any idea what direction it is the New Orleans Pelicans are going in? I mean, besides the bottom, but like what their what David Griffin's plan is. Uh, what, you know, what new coach Willie Green? I mean, and this is not fair. Willie yeah. Green, he, it's, he's 14 games into his, so I'm not even, take Willie Green out of it. This is not his fault. You trade away Lonzo Ball and you bring in Devontae Graham because why? <laughs> yeah, that's all part of um the Pelicans' non-plan that they mm, that they have. Mm. They, they don't have a plan. They don't have a blueprint. No offense, somebody get up in here and talk to Zion because – so I, I'm, hearing some, reasons, things. I'm hearing some what, things, but what the hell Zion. are you hearing? Because we need to know. I am hearing that a lot of the exaggeration about the weight and him not playing anytime soon overstated. Allegedly, he'll be back sooner than we know, and he's going to be ready to take the league by storm. Now, look, could be it could just it. be. It could just be somebody talking out the ass. As you know, in our business, people lie to us all the time. But that's, that's <laughs> I love it. Oh Craig, my God. Craig, Craig, Craig. Craig's, got the, Craig's got the picture of Zion up in his bucket hat. Look, I mean, we when Zion played last year, we saw what that was. I mean, he was outstanding. I mean, he was, he great. was, a, he was a, the, the best low post scorer in the league. I mean, he's got a 78%. Like, I mean, he was shooting something ridiculous on the field. I mean, you couldn't. You can't stop him. His second jump ability, we know all that. The question is, when is that going to happen? And we'll see. If he's back and then New Orleans gets on a little run, maybe. I mean, it's still early, but, you know, being one in 14 or two in whatever they are, it's, you know, yeesh. Oh, God. That's terrible up in there. I mean, I, who do they even have? I mean, like, Brandon Ingram's been been hurt. So he hasn't played every game. Like, I mean, look, with Brandon Ingram and and Lonzo, I mean, it's Lonzo, geez, because they need Lonzo. Why I keep saying Lonzo's name? With Brandon mm-hmm. and, and Zion, that's a pretty good one-two scoring punch. The problem is I don't love their perimeter creation. I mean, look, Nikhil Alexander-Walker's nice and all, but okay. <laughs> um, Devontae Graham, already talked about him, right? You, got, you brought in Valanchunas. I mean, he... He's got to score the ball on the inside. So when Zion comes back, now you got the clogged lane. Like, I just don't, again, I'm not exactly sure what the plan is in New Orleans. They don't seem like they have one. Um, at least that's, we haven't heard one or a direction at least that they're going in. So that, that should be interesting. At least when we get Zion back, I shouldn't even say wait, it's embarrassing. Why am I associating <laughs> myself? Um, when they get Zion back, hopefully they have some sort of direction or they start winning games because if not, I see a very potential nasty breakup down the road mm. because how many years has it been? And how many years, how many head coaches has he had? What? Three, three, three head coaches in three years. Yeah. So, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I'd be a little unhappy too. Like, Hey, why do I got to move every month per se? You know, yeah, what I mean? yeah. you know what I mean? It's yeah. like moving every month almost. Um, so yeah. Or every year, you know what I'm saying? No, I got but you. anyway, 
my my dumpster fire team, I would have taken the Pelicans, but I was like, you know what? I don't want it to be boring. Let me like, switch it up a little bit because there's enough shitty teams in the league to go around. <laughs> um, let's talk about the Rockets. Uh, they're they're one in thirteen. They're one in thirteen. They lost to the Grizzlies the other night. The Grizzlies hey, listen, have, I think, like what a worse. No, don't no, kill, no. Don't kill my Grizzlies. They are all right. Uh, yeah, they're all right. Sorry, I was thinking of the Timberwolves, who are absolutely worse <laughs> oh, than the Rockets. Oh, the Timberwolves, jeez. Yeah. So, but yeah, they lost to the Grizzlies. The Grizzlies went on a 20-0 run in the third quarter. Like, what? They were up like, 40 are, are we okay? Yeah. 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 And I get it. They have Jalen Green, who is my pick for Rookie of the Year. But, like, Jalen Green is not going to come in here and be the 18-year-old uh, that saves everybody. Jaylen Sorry, Green, it's not going to happen. Jalen Green ain't winning shit. Evan Mobley about to win Rookie of the Year. <laughs> Oh, Book it. again, you Book woke it. up and chose violence today. <laughs> I sure um, did. With your words, with your words, <laughs> as Kuzma would say. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I don't know what's going on with the Rockets. I mean, I, Silas needs to do something, and I don't know if it's a lineup change um, or if they need that yet, but they need they need to hit some people uh, mm-hmm. when the market opens because it's like, what the hell? Yeah, like one in thirteen. I mean, I, I feel bad for Coach Stephen Silas. You know, I mean, this is not what he signed up for. He thought he was getting James Harden and gonna like do his thing, and then it was like, nah. Harden's like, I'm out. Send me to Brooklyn. Like, it, yep, it's rough. But look, they're rebuilding. Clearly, that's 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 what they're doing. Um, they're, they're sticking with their young guys, right? Um, Jay Sean Tate, uh, Christian Wood. You know, they, they they got some players. The thing about young guys is, Shadow, young guys typically don't know how to play. By and large, right now, mm-hmm. this sanguine, right? All, all these awesome guys. Thanks, Greg. Um, Scotty Barnes can play, right? Evan Mobley can play, so, but like for the most part, rookies because they don't, they don't, they don't know that. How do I be about we and me simultaneously? That's hard for a lot of rookies. They know how to get their own and do their own thing, but this is a team game. So how do I do me and we at the same time? And that that takes time, right? For most rookies, you gotta you gotta learn. How do I impact the game in other ways, right? Shot ain't falling. Like right now, if Jalen Green doesn't have the ball in his hands, what what does he do? Yeah, true. Actually. Exactly. Nothing. Exactly. Exactly. Literally. He's still gonna win nothing. Rookie of the Year. Greg agrees. Listen, he ain't winning shit. It's gonna be Evan Mobley. Mobley's on a listen. The Cavs are. We gotta talk about the Cavs. I think next week. I'm gonna I'm gonna catch them in person. Uh, I think because the Nets run a back to back, so they'll play. That's a tough back to back for the Nets. They got Golden State tonight, Cleveland tomorrow night and cleveland's good but jared allen evan mobley that is that's cleveland's that's a, that's a not nice as little bad as no they were gonna be. and i think honestly colin sexton being out is kind of actually helping them play better and you know what all the rumors <laughs> about him kind of being the uh, yeah the diva child yeah, uh-huh. oh, per yeah. se just mm-hmm. saying uh-huh, just yeah. saying exactly, um, exactly why do you think kevin love was a little pissed no i'm kidding i, don't know, but I was totally assuming that <laughs> greg ball hog <laughs> exactly exactly no they're, they're playing a lot better like i'm yeah yep yep oh and you know who also is a dumpster fire we don't need to go into it because they speak for itself uh the magic oh well i mean look <laughs> i mean we knew that was gonna happen with the magic right like they just i mean oh god that yeah, yeah. gives you chills uh, Gives you a little chills, you know what I'm saying? Uh, um, uh-huh. why, why you got my boy Scotty Pippen on the show, Ron Gerard? Uh, because you man, got my boy here. Because your man Scotty's wild, and look, I, I want to be clear about something. <laughs> Scotty Pippen, one of my favorite players of all time, uh, a member of the NBA 75th anniversary team, a six-time NBA champion. He's made yes. multiple All NBA, All Stars, All Defensive teams. Um, you know, uh, formed the great duo with Michael Jordan. You know, I, I, yeah, he he was like that. Okay, Scotty is out here trying to sell those that memoir in his book, and you know he's saying some pretty wild and outlandish things. Um, we kind of knew this was coming because the Last Dance came out, and Scotty didn't like how he was portrayed. But I mean, yo, Scotty, MJ was the executive producer. You know how that was gonna go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, um. It is, it is, it is one of those things where Scotty has not liked how he's been portrayed. I love that, Craig. Jordan going off for 52. It's Scotty Pippen's all star classic. <laughs> <laughs> um, Scotty does not like how he was portrayed because his entire story and how people view him is always going to be linked to 
the great Michael Jordan. Now, Mm -hmm. some people might say, you know, if I got to be, you know, called a Robin or be the Batman, be the Robin of somebody's Batman, that ain't a bad person to be the Robin of somebody's Batman too, right? I get it. Um, But Scotty wants to tell his own story. He wants to, he wants to be out there. Greg, I know you got some good audio or video of Scotty saying something wild over there. Um, put, put something up because your man, he's, he's just, he bugging. <laughs> so, so this was, <laughs> oh man, he, 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 this is Scotty talking about, um, I think the, the back game. So when one of the things he says is, is that, Everyone talks about the flu game, but nobody talks yeah. about a bad bat game. And it's like, well, Scotty, like the thing about the flu game was Jordan was unreal in the flu game. Like, yeah, in, like I don't in, understand. In, in, in the bad bat game, as Bomani Jones said, you played like you had a bad back. <laughs> right. So, I mean, <laughs> not quite the same thing, my guy. Like, it's a little tough. And look, I understand, right? He wants to be the author of his own story and not get caught up in the Michael Jordan mythos. But my dude, that ship has sailed already, right? Like the further and further we move away from that time period, the legend and the mythos of Jordan is going to only grow and grow and grow. I mean, it's already outsized as it is. It's only going to get bigger. So that is what it is. I will say this, you know, <laughs> he's so funny. He's talking about how the Warriors cannot claim being the greatest team of all time, that 73 and 9 team, because his Chicago Bulls team that went 72 and 10, even though the Warriors won one more regular season game, they did not win the title. As you famously know, Jenna, they blew a 3-1 lead to the uh, Cleveland Cavaliers and LeBron James and yes. lost lost the NBA Finals. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will say this about that. So Scotty was saying, okay, if we break down any one of our 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 3 P teams, particularly our second one, and we go player for player versus the Warriors, we're just better everywhere. And I'm like, I don't know about that, my guy. So he says that Luke Longley is better than Draymond Green. Oh, I'm sorry. Dennis Rodman is better than Draymond Green. Wrong. I love Dennis Rodman. And I'll I'll say this. Dennis Rodman, I might even give him the edge as the better defender. But Draymond Green is a hub on offense. Yes, he doesn't shoot. However, Draymond brings the ball up, initiates the offense, a split cut action with Steph Curry and Klay Thompson, can pass like nobody's business. Draymond Mm -hmm. is a much better facilitator on offense than Dennis Rodman ever was. So he's better than Dennis Rodman (laughs) in that regard. And they're close enough in defense. He says, um, obviously, Steph Curry better than Ron Harper. Okay. I mean, that's duh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the one, come on now. <laughs> the, uh, Clay Thompson and Michael Jordan. Uh, of course, Michael Jordan gets that edge, obviously. And then he says, Kevin Durant versus me. You could go either way. <laughs> Yo, I was dying. <laughs> You could go either way. Um, I don't think so, my guy. Do they no. lead to the same destination, <laughs> which is Kevin Durant? <laughs> Listen, again, Scotty, one of the all-time greats, one of the great perimeter defenders of all time, a great point forward, all that. Listen, Scotty got nothing for Kevin Durant. Nothing for the seven-foot sniper. Literally nothing. You, you drop Kevin Durant down into the 90s, they'd be like, what is this alien doing shooting the ball from all over the place that tall? Yeah, no. No, 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 no. Scotty, I, lo- I-, I love you, buddy. I love you, but you wildin'. <laughs> oh, my God. Didn't we talk about this already? He's selling bourbon, isn't he? He's selling his bourbon or rum. He's selling a book. Listen, he just he's just out here, man. He's just out here. Man, come on. See, this is like how you tarnish these years of you incredible see, you, great you see, work. You see what I'm saying? This is this is what I'm saying, buddy. This yeah, is you how know. you this is how you tarnish your legacy. Like you're not helping, guy. Like nobody's out here caping for you like this. This is no, I mean, if anything, like my plan would be mostly like kissing. MJ's asked my whole life so I could, you know, you know, go, go to the golf club or um, course. I said clubs because I don't know golf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, golf club, yeah, yeah. So I can do cool elite things. Like, <laughs> come on. I mean, I just, he's doing it all wrong. I mean, you got to kiss his wrong. ass. All wrong. Let's see. Oh. God love you, Scotty, but nah. Oh, man. 
What a yikes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another thing that made me say yikes as well is the fact that we have to give Katie some more flowers because <laughs> Gerard made the show run today and said that we have to do this. So well, Jenna, I'm only doing this so I don't get fined. <laughs> we are the seven footers <laughs> basketball podcast. So I mean, why not pay no. why not pay some more tribute to maybe yes. one of our patron saints? Yes, you're, no, you are right. This is my unbiased uh, attempt at giving Katie his flowers. No, I'm kidding. Let's talk about the man that is leading the NBA in scoring. I mean, 29 points per game, pretty much. Um, you know, I'm estimating here. But, mm -hmm. I mean, career highs in numbers that he's putting up, and literally it's the first quarter of the season. I mean, <laughs> off the Achilles, just new team, new city, I mean, we've already been through this before, but like, aka 10 minutes ago, but like, <laughs> it's unbelievable. It really is. I can't believe what we are seeing. And we, we have to also forget he's not, he's not extremely young anymore either. Oh, so, no. I mean, the things that we're seeing him do, I mean, it, we haven't really seen it before, arguably. Um, you, you know, what's so interesting, Jenna. So Jonathan Sharks on the Ringer wrote an article. Um, Greg, if you want to pull that up, the link's in the show notes. And it talked about the changing rules in the NBA and how a lot of the game scorers like Trey Young and James Harden are finding things to be a little difficult for them. Um, but one seven-foot sniper, Kevin Durant, is not finding any, any difficulties at all, right? He's still managing mm -hmm. to get out there and, and do what he does. And, I mean, Jenna, it... The reason why, you know, of course, he's my favorite player in the league right now. But the reason why I, I, I'm talking about him in, in, in this way is just we have to appreciate this. Because as you said, he's not a young man. He's 32. He'll be 33, I want to say, later this year he or uh, next year. He'll, this is the back end of his career. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not saying he's retiring tomorrow, but he's got more years behind him than in front. And, yes. you know, he's shooting 64%. From two point range, I got it all down here on 14.1 twos per game. Uh, his ability to get to his spots on the floor, and not only that, Jenna, make the right basketball play. When he first came into the league, he could score 20 points right out right off the gate as a rookie. I mean, mm -hmm. he was we we knew we could score the ball, but and this is something he's always said. What people don't appreciate is the full evolution of his game. And you see the top five scorers in points per touch. So Durant touches the ball less than just about anybody, right, in terms of full-on uh, full on usage. But he gets 0.427 points per touch. And that's because he's so economical. He doesn't have to dribble the ball and search out for, where am I going to get to my spot? Catch, shoot, rise, pull up. Mm -hmm. like he, amazing, 29.6 points per game. But he can read the game so well, Jenna. Knows exactly where the double's coming from. Knows how to get it involved, to get it to a teammate. When Harden's on the floor, he knows how to play. Oh, okay, I'm going to play this role. I'm going to Harden be the maestro. I can just, you know, get lines off catch and shoot, pass to open guys. Oh, Harden's off the floor? Cool, I can go into point Durant mode. I mean, he is the most malleable superstar I think we've ever had. And in that, what I mean by that is you can put him next to anybody else and it will work because of the way in which he plays the game, Right. You could also make the entire offense centered around him and it will work, right? That is, that's a skill. And it's again, because of that size and because of that, that availability leads the league, of course, in number of 30 point games a season with seven. And, you know, again, basketball fans just marvel and be excited that in this generation, you've had Steph Curry, LeBron James, James Harden, Kevin. Mm -hmm. Dur I mean, this is, this is otherworldly, man. Like, you know, the old heads love to talk about, well, back in my day, blah, 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 and all this. Yo, man, that's all well and good. But let me tell you about these dudes in this in this era right now. These dudes, and these, all everyone who I mentioned, these are all timers, all time great players. When it's all said and done, you'll see what they rank. Ooh, I love it. <laughs> oh, man. Your dialogues give me chills at least three times per episode. It's, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful I try. Thing. I try. All right. Well, as we know, we can catch KD playing against his old Warriors. And we are about to witness, potentially, if the mm -hmm. Warriors keep up uh, this play after what? We said they were 11 and 4? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 11 and 2? Uh, no, they're, they're 11 and 2, next to 10 and 4. Yes. And 
if if they keep this up, we could potentially be witnessing a finals uh, preview here we because are, yep. we have the East and the West going at it. And let's talk about this matchup a little bit because it is elite. I mean, we're going to see high level basketball tonight with these two teams that are already off to a really, really hot start. And again, of course, we wish that we could see the point guard matchup and Kyrie Irving and Steph Curry, but Kyrie Irving is still out uh, due to COVID wilding. nineteen protocols while and out here in these streets for real. So let's talk about what's going to happen on the floor though. When these two teams go head to head, who are you predicting to win off the bat? Uh, Brooklyn, I believe is a two and a half point favorite. Last time I checked, let me pull up the old stat stats here. Um, I think it's going to be a, a good game, Jen. I really do. Um, I, it, it can go on either way. Honestly, I, I I don't have mm-hmm. a leaning. I really don't have a leaning right now. Uh, I'm going to say actually Brooklyn's three and a half point favorite right now. Joe Harris is out oh, yeah. for, the, for the Nets, um, and Paul Millsap is also out. That's going to hurt their depth some. Patty Mills has been great. I mean, the Draymond KD match will be, of course, fascinating to watch. I mean, mm-hmm. as good as Draymond is, I mean, he knows. It's like, I'm, I'm going to work my ass off, but it's Kevin Durant. He's going to do his thing. And Bruce Brown said this last night. He's like, I'm not going to do a whole lot of talking to Steph. And I'm like, yeah, good idea, Bruce. Just <laughs> You just play your D and don't, don't need to angry or awake these giants, right? Like, you just do your job. And, you know, pray like hell that you're in the right spot and you hope they miss. That's sometimes all you can do against these great players. But it'll be interesting, right? Because both teams, D- Durant knows the Warriors system. The Warriors know, know how Durant likes to play. It'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. I'm going to say because they're home, I'm going to give the Nets a slight edge. Mm, okay, okay. Uh, real quick, too, what's going on with uh, our boy Nick uh, Claxton here? Uh, when so is this Claxton- return going to happen? So Claxton was out for a non-COVID illness. Um, it's like a respiratory thing or something. Bad. And you know, the thing about Nick is like it takes him forever to ramp back up into playing shape. So he's ramping up. I don't think he'll be playing the night, um, but they're, they're working to get him back into shape so he can play. I think about a lot of these NBA players when they're sick, they're not obviously can't work out. So they lose, they lose their cardio and lose all their, mm-hmm. lose all that. But Claxton, you know, he's had a bit of a, of a rough start to the season. And this is an important year for him because he's extension eligible. So he's got to kind of turn things around and start playing well. Heck yeah. Uh, Nets are the favorite tonight. I'm seeing with the odds. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. You know what? Just to spice it up a little bit, Still I'll different. go with Golden State because I'm expecting a scoring tear from Steph Curry. Why not? You're not going that money line for Golden State tonight. Plus 135. And- Exactly. And they also are coming off a loss to the Hornets. So they're mm-hmm. probably like, dang, we got to restore our, our reputation here. <laughs> so let's go do it on Brooklyn's floor. <laughs> <laughs> that is that. That's all she wrote. Not really, because we got to talk about the Lakers a little bit here. Because, yes, they are going through a slump without LeBron James, with that uh, abdominal strain that's kept him out for almost, what, two weeks here? Mm-hmm. He mm-hmm. is nearing a return possibly what do you know what is happening out here he's already missed nine games yeah including uh two with a sprained ankle so Woj is reporting that friday looks like there's optimism that he'll be back in the lineup friday um look i've said this before jenna every year that lebron's been in la he has missed part of every season with an injury the biggest indicator of future injury is previous injury this is this is where we're at right now with lebron james now the Lakers were able to kind of sort of keep themselves afloat while he was out. So perhaps this nine games that he's been off will be helpful in terms of giving him some time to recover and get himself together. But you know, that those, that ankle and the, the ab and the other strains, watch them, watch them all season because he can get on a run where he's playing 10, 12 games in a row. And the next thing you know, Ooh, he's going to be out again, missing two to three weeks because he re-aggravated it. Right. Once you aggravate these types of injuries, they don't just magically disappear and get better. You, the chances of them getting reaggravated again, very high. Look at this. We got the uh, LeBron James, Alice Caruso, a little, little, little uh, love. <laughs> Listen, I, I the, loved it. I, I bet the Lakers wish they had Alice Caruso right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. He probably looked at that bench last night, even though he scored no points and was <laughs> like, oh, yeah, look at us now. They, hey. um, the Lakers, like, I mean, he came back to him and said, yo, would you be willing to do what the Bulls did? And they were like, nah, we're good. I was like, okay. Hey. Listen. He okay. probably didn't meet the age range. We're older 
<laughs> we're older. I love it. I love it. <laughs> we're older. You have to be a certain age to get in this club. <laughs> I wouldn't make it. It's oh fine. no, you would not. You're too young. <laughs> Whatever. I would still sneak my way in. You know it. Uh, of course. <laughs> Hey, that's it. Um, listen, another shout out to our our new friends at the Props Network. This mm -hmm. is going to be a very fun yeah. relationship that yes. we have here. We are excited. Guys, thank you as always. So make sure you follow the Props Network. That's where you can watch us live stream every episode. Of course, you can still find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all of that at 7 Footers Pod on Twitter, at 7 Footers Podcast on Instagram at JS Hector, at Jenna Lemoncelli. Thank you again. Shouts to the Props Network, Kyle, Sam, everybody over there. And of course, super producer Greg Alcala. Greg, you are awesome, my friend. We appreciate it. Until next time, everybody. Peace. Peace. Spent a couple years out here with these raps Trying to have a plan that we may come true Plotted some jobs but I ain't hit back I don't want to trap, what's a man gonna do? Chevy told me